Hey there, it's Shauna. Welcome to your weekly astrology forecast for July 22nd. This week is about love in action. And I have a quote to share with you to kick off this week. Uh, this is by Barbara Bonner. She says, Unlike its close cousin, compassion, generosity requires action. To be a generous person, you must act. In many ways, generosity is compassion in action. And it is love in action. Generosity is a practice. As with anything we practice, we get better at it over time. And uh, this is a very appropriate quote because we have some energy this week around uh, generosity, around um, abundance, things coming in, and especially around uh, this vibe of connecting with others. There's a certain element of um, things coming together in a harmonious way when we work together. Uh, so my name is Shauna with Neo Feminine Astrology. Excited to share the astrology of this week with you. As always, I have three tips for you to make the most out of this week. Uh, so first things first, at the very beginning of the week, the sun will move into the sign of Leo. And so this is important because uh, the sun acts as a spotlight for what it is that we're focused on. Uh, we follow the sun with the seasons. And uh, when the sun um, for this particular time moves into the sign of Leo, this also symbolizes a uh, end of this eclipse season because the sun will no longer be in the sign of Cancer where the north and south node are located, closes out our eclipse cycle. Uh, also, the sun will be in its rulership. Uh, Leo is ruled by the sun, and so the sun is said to be in a position in the sign of Leo to express itself fully, to express all of its um, beautiful, wonderful significance. So uh, the sun symbolizes leadership, prominence, uh, the conscious awareness, things that we are consciously aware of, uh, self-identity, identity, uh, the conscious uh, ego, the conscious personality, that which makes you an individual. So this whole next month of Leo season is a great time to check in with how it is that you um, identify with yourself, how it is that you embrace yourself. Uh, the other transit that's happening as far as things moving into different signs is that the planet Venus will move into the sign of Leo. And uh, Venus and Leo, Venus is about relationships, beauty, love, sex, money, even. And um, Venus moving from the sign of Cancer to the sign of Leo, Venus is being uh, influenced. We can think of it that way. Venus is looking to the sun now for a part of its, um, a part of its meaning and symbols. So I want to talk about that more in a second, but first, uh, as far as the lunations, we have the last quarter moon this week in the sign of Taurus. So this is happening midweek, uh, Wednesday or Thursday, depending on where you are in the world. And um, it's happening at 24, or it's happening on Wednesday, the 24th, at 6.18 p.m. Pacific time. It's at two degrees of Taurus. And uh, so a few different things with this particular last quarter moon. So last quarter moon is the uh, known uh, by Daniel Rudyard as a point of crisis in consciousness. And uh, really that just means that there is um, a tendency to have like an inner conflict. And this can come about because a square is when, um, when, two planets, doesn't have to be the center of the moon, they are in um, a configuration where they're sharing the same modality but a different element. So in this case we have the sun in the sign of Leo, moon in the sign of Taurus. Uh, they're both fixed signs. They're making a square shape in the chart. Um, so they share that like fixed firm um, sustaining something, like really digging into something, but Taurus is an earth sign, Leo is a fire sign. So they, there's like a difference of opinion here. And uh, this is coming into 
um, the point in the lunar cycle before we go into the new moon. So it's a waning um, phase of the moon. It's where the moon is slowly every single day becoming less and less visible in the sky. So it's a movement inward, a movement towards reflection. Hence, um, crisis of consciousness, where that's more of an inner thing. It's more like you're thinking about things and um, maybe this week uh, there's something where you want to change your mind or you feel kind of like pulled in a different direction. Or it can simply be that this is a time to uh, wrap things up and to start to get closure on things so that you can start something new with the new moon or so that you can continue in the next phase of the process when we have our new moon. Uh, let's see, other things that I want to say about this last quarter moon. Uh, so it's at two degrees of Taurus. This means that it is uh, co-present with Uranus. Uranus is in the early degrees of Taurus. It's at six degrees of Taurus right now. And so I, this has an effect also, this flavors, this last quarter moon. Uranus is about surprises. It's about changing systems. And um, although for my taste, it is a bit of a wide orb, so to speak, um, two degrees to six degrees, uh, I wouldn't consider that super close um, because Uranus moves so slowly, but it's still important to note. So um, how I would relate that is it's excellent, especially when you're like trying to figure something out. If there is like a pivot point that you're having or you want to make a decision to change something or to process something, it's good to be open to new ideas and um, it's good to be open to surprises. Uranus uh, is surprises. Um, what's really cool about this last quarter moon is that uh, the moon is exalted in the sign of Taurus. And uh, exalted means that the moon is able to do like all of its best qualities. It is um, sort of like lifted up on a pedestal, so to speak. And when something is lifted up on a pedestal, it has a magnificence to it. Um, so uh, this is what I would consider like a very strong moon, a very lucky moon. Uh, it is a time where um, anytime the moon is in Taurus, typically uh, where you can do the things that you need to do, where the emotional center is strong, it's solid, it's stable. Taurus is that fixed sign. Um, and the other piece of this is since um, Taurus is ruled by Venus, uh, the moon is looking to Venus to fulfill its moonly things that it does. So our emotional center, moon, is looking to Venus relationships. So this brings me to the next part of this week is that uh, Mercury will conjunct Venus this week. So this happens um, before Venus moves into the sign of Leo. This happens um, at 27 degrees of Cancer. So Mercury and Venus will be at that same point in the zodiac at 27 degrees of Cancer. And uh, it's interesting because neither Mercury nor Venus are particularly strong at this particular point in the zodiac. Um, I mean, it's it's nice that Venus is in a feminine sign and a water sign. Um, Mercury also is feminized in this particular place. Um, but at this particular point, as far as um, when we're doing like planetary strength at 27 degrees of Cancer in particular, neither of them really are super strong. So that just means neither of them um, have a lot of strength to like really express their natures. Um, Venus is about relationships, love, beauty, sex, etc. Mercury is about communication. Um, Mer Mercury is actually still retrograde as well. Um, so Mercury is uh, wrapping up its retrograde, its inner reflection cycle. So uh, these coming together, what this really tells me is that there is um, conversations that are to be had this week, especially going back over things, um, maybe smoothing out a relationship or a conversation, um, smoothing out something that maybe wasn't expressed clearly in the beginning, or um, maybe there's something that needs to be reflected on or reviewed upon. And uh, what's interesting is, so uh, Mercury and Venus are in the sign of Cancer, and 
uh, they are essentially looking to the moon because Cancer is ruled by the moon. So we have this kind of like interesting um, mutual reception where the moon is in Venus's sign and then Venus is in the moon sign. So they're kind of like pinging back and forth on each other. Um, and so even though Mercury and Venus are not particularly strong in this point, they're looking to the moon, which is strong. Uh, so I would say all of that to say that I think um, there's there's a lot that you could do here with having conversations, um, connecting with people, and even though Mercury is retrograde, it does feel like a time where um, where you could smooth things out or where you could uh, uh, gain resources through talking or comfort even. Cancer energy is very much about comfort. So there's a lot that you could do here when it comes to relationships, I think, and connecting with other people. And um, connecting from a place of wanting to like genuinely um, feel heard or feel comforted or uh, feel like you're getting a need met in some way, like that genuine, like not necessarily that you get something like practical out of this, but like that there's like a, an emotional need that is being met in some way, whether that's for community or um, for connection or, um, you know, just expressing yourself in a very uh, heartfelt way. So the last part of this week that I'll share with you is um, we have Mars trining Jupiter. And so this is happening at 15 degrees of Leo and Sagittarius. Mars is in Leo, Jupiter is in Sagittarius. And um, again, I hope that you're enjoying um, and not getting too bored. I'm looking at like the strength of the planets to inform how it is that things will express. Uh, so Mars is not particularly strong here in Leo at this particular point in Leo, um, but Jupiter is in its own sign, which is super happy for Jupiter. So uh, what that means is that Jupiter is able to express itself more freely. Um, Mars is about um, physical vitality. It's about fighting for something. It's about um, asserting yourself in a very active way. And Jupiter is about abundance and expansion. It's about learning new things. Uh, Jupiter is about expanding your awareness of something. And so that can be done in many different ways. That can be done through uh, reading a book, talking to people, uh, exploring a new environment, just trying anything new, really. I think that... Um, before we discovered Uranus, Jupiter had a lot of Uranian kind of qualities where there was like this um, newness was exciting, novelty was exciting. Like those are all Jupiter kind of themes. So, uh, so there's a lot of like physical energy and physical vitality that is being channeled into Jupiter type things. Um, so, uh, you know, I'm curious to see how this works for you, but I would imagine that this gets channeled through in more of a Jupiterian kind of way versus a Mars kind of way. So um, definitely like a theme of ambition and like fire and passion and um, luck and synchronicity here as well. Uh, I would definitely look at where you have Jupiter in your birth chart to see where this may express. So wherever you have Sagittarius in your birth chart, whatever house it is in, uh, will tell you a little bit about where um, in what area of your life that that um, luck is being expressed. So you can like explore those kinds of things. Um, so leave me a comment. Let me know where you have uh, Sagittarius in your chart and what that means for you. Uh, all right. So... Um, let's see, what do I, I think that's, that feels good. That feels complete for now. Um, and then what I will do also is I want to give you, uh, sort of like a little mini lunar report as well for the moon signs through the week, because I think that can be helpful to look at as well. Uh, so we'll start with, uh, Monday. So Monday, the moon starts off in the sign of Aries. And so, uh, let's see, Monday, Tuesday, and then even Wednesday morning, 
um, Pacific time, the moon is in the sign of Aries. And you can check, you can Google to get your local times. But generally, Monday, Tuesday, early Wednesday, moon is in the sign of Aries. And so Aries is about action. It's about passion. It is about moving from instinct. Like, I want it, I got it, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, so early in the week is good for action, good for initiation. Um getting stuff done and like don't get caught up on trying to um, super plan early in the week. Um, that's not good for Aries energy. It's really like I would save that for later in the week. Um, Aries energy is really good for uh, going for low hanging fruit, like stuff that you can get done very quickly that's going to be more gratifying. Uh, and so then Wednesday, of course, we have that uh, last quarter moon in the sign of Taurus. So the moon will be in Taurus on Wednesday through Thursday. And then let's see, does it go to Friday? Uh, so to Friday as well. So Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, the moon is in the sign of Taurus. So uh, this is flavored, of course, by the cycle, the last quarter point. But we can also look at just Taurus in general as... Um, things being slow and steady one step at a time. Taurus is an earth sign. There's more practicality there. And um, so whenever the moon is in the sign of Taurus, it's kind of interesting because it does get flavored by the outer planets every single month, um, the slower moving planets. So Taurus will always, at least at this point in time, uh, it will conjunct Uranus earlier in the sign, and then as it moves through, it will trine Saturn and then Pluto. And so, uh, like, these are strong energies, and uh, they're going to be more felt if you're having aspects from those outer planets to your natal chart. Um, but I think there's a lot of power here. I think there's, like, this excitement that may happen, even though it's a Taurus moon and you think of more fixed stability. I think that that Uranus conjunction at the beginning... Um, will always uh, tend to flavor the Taurus moon where it's kind of like more exciting than it would normally be. And then there's like the stability that happens um, with Saturn and Pluto, like this, like wanting to really root down and to go deep into things and to um, get uber practical. So let's see. So then that leaves us Saturday and Sunday with the moon in Gemini. So I... Uh, so I think Saturday and Sunday are like, those are days that I would say for like, if you have some um, more analytical work to do, um, if you have some planning to do, um, if you want to like chit chat and stuff like that, like those are, that's like the communication, the ideas kind of days. So I would say um, earlier in the week, I would um, focus on like, if you have a really intense workout program that you want to do or something that's more physical, I would plan that earlier in the week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Um, and then that last quarter moon, I would really save for like some, uh, some contemplation time, like connecting with your body even. And then later in the week, it's like uh, having fun, things being more light and airy. Mm. All right, so I have three tips for you to make the most out of this week. Uh, tip number one is to ask for it. So I say ask for it because there's a lot of energy this week around connecting with people and with um, being received in a positive way, with getting your needs met, with luck and synchronicity. Uh, there's so much here to take advantage of. And um, I'll tell you what, I think after the last few weeks that we had in uh, eclipse season, and then we had a lot of aspects that involved um, Pluto and Saturn, I think that this week is a welcome sense of relief and calm. And um, it just feels like there's a lot of comfort going on, especially in comparison to the last few weeks. So that's tip number one is to ask for it. Ask for what it is that you want this week. Uh, take a risk in that way. Tip number two is to embrace ambition. And I'm saying that because I really want you to tune into this Mars trine Jupiter energy. Um, when there's a trine, it is a symbol of something that flows easily and it tends to flow so easily that we don't even notice that it's happening or we take it for granted. 
that's possible. Um, so there's like a lot of um, like physical energy, ambition, and like this firing, fieriness that can uh, that can come about. The other thing with uh, this Mars. Uh, Jupiter is that they're both in fire signs and so it's like emphasizing this passion. Uh, so I would say like embrace ambition this week. Embrace your, like yeah like I'm gonna go for it. I'm gonna do it even though it's you know I know it's like a waning moon cycle which is more about reflection. Mercury is retrograde which is more about reflection but I would take advantage of this little shot of energy. You know even if you're just channeling your ambition into something that um, that maybe you don't necessarily act on in the future, but you know, it's written down or it's, um, something that you allow yourself to dream about, etc. That can be, uh, a good way to use this energy to take advantage of it. Tip number three is to give back this week. And so this taps into the waning moon, um, cycle. So, uh, from the last quarter moon, to the new moon is a time that's about uh, sharing and giving back and uh, connecting, like connecting with people, but also just generally sharing what it is that you have to give. And um, so I think that is something that could feel very gratifying this week. And then on top of that, there's the Mercury Venus together uh, in the sign of Cancer, which is like a very comforting, um, and it's like very focused on the other and how is it that I can help you? How is it, it that I can make your life easier? So I think that that is going to feel gratifying this week as well. Uh, so those are your tips and I will pull a few cards. So as I'm shuffling the deck, uh, if there is something particular that um, you want to focus on, like a question or something that you want clarity on, you can hold that in your awareness. Um, or you can just relax, take a few deep breaths. So I'm going to pull three cards and you can see this as um, past, present, future, or you can choose a number between one and three and that will be your card. But I want you to decide now before you see them. <laughs> uh, that way it, it works better. Okie dokie, almost done. I like to shuffle for a long time. I don't know about you but I like to get like the, the juju in there. Um, plus, one of my teachers always shuffled for a long time, so I think that I uh, took that, uh, that sentiment from her. All right. One, two, three. Okay. So I pulled, I'll show them one, two, three at first, and then I'll go into elaborate. So uh, I pulled the five of cups for card number one. And the six of wands for card number two. And then the page of cups for card number three. Uh, all right, so five of cups, this is a card that shows sadness. It shows um, like a feeling of loss, a feeling of grief even. And it shows where um, it, it's a sign to not let yourself get lost in what it is that you have lost it um because with the five so i want to back it up first okay so um cups are about emotions they're about uh how you feel about things um five is actually kind of like an active uh number in numerology it's about creativity it's about um can also be about children as well 
Um, but it's got like this active, creative, um, like travel, stuff like that are all associated with the number five. Um, in the writer weight, this image, um, he's really sad about these cups that have spilled over, something that has been lost and cannot be gained back. But he's um, so focused on what's been lost that he doesn't see the cups that he has. He's seeing the, the glass half empty, so to speak. And so uh, this is a reminder to um, acknowledge that grief, but also know that that's not the entire picture. To remember that you have resources behind you. Um, the other piece of this um, this card as well is that there's this bridge over here so he can get to where he wants to go, this castle. And like the other part too of this is like he's looking this way where the, the cups are like this uh, river that looks like it's impossible to cross. But if he were to turn around, he would not only see the cups, but also the bridge that leads over. So um, I pulled this card reversed as well. Uh, so for you, you know, this could be a message to literally look back on things um, in a more objective kind of way and to see the resources that you do have. And um, I think that's definitely not to downplay um, valid grief over loss, um, but it is also a reminder that, uh, that you have what you need to get what you need. All right, <laughs> uh, Six of Wands is card number two. So this card I also pulled reversed. Um, this card is about um, being celebrated as a leader. Um, it is about like he's being like celebrated by all these people. Wands is about passion. It's about movement. It's about action. And uh, six is about balance. It can also be about family. Um, six can also kind of have this vibe of like karma or you get what you put in. Um, you reap what you sow. That's very six kind of energy. Um, so I wonder, you know, how do you, like this reminds me of the sun being in the sign of Leo now. Like, um, do you feel important? Do you feel special? Do you feel prominent? Is that something that you want in your life? And um, that I pulled this reversed. It's like, okay, what is it that's holding you back from that? Um, whether it's conscious or unconscious. So that's something that I would look at if this card came up for you, or if this like strikes you. Um, you know, he's on this white horse and he's got this wreath crown thing and everyone's celebrating him. So, um, it could also be a sign to um, stay humble even or like connected to yourself even when you are being praised, um, you know, to remember who it is that you are uh, without all of those things, without all of that lovely, um, that lovely attention and um, being lifted up, you know, where are your roots connected. Uh, all right. Last but not least, I love this. Uh, this is one of my favorite cards, the Page of Cups. Uh, so Cups is, again, a, um, about emotions. It is a more feminine kind of um, suit. The page has kind of like a teenager feel to it. The page is um, a symbol of someone who is very excited and um, passionate, but also a little bit inexperienced. Um, this card in particular is tends to show um, an interest in the arts or um, humanitarian things. It can also show that like a message is being brought to you. A lot of times page um, in the tro specifically can show where there is a message that is being brought in. Um, and this one in particular, because he's like, has the cup that he's offering with a fish in it. <laughs> um, so, so I wonder how that, this one I did pull up, right? Um, so I wonder how that resonates with you. You know, if there is, um, an interest that you have in the arts or, um, design even, or anything creative. And, um, if there's a message that's coming through for you as well. 
Uh, so uh, those are your cards for this week. I hope you enjoyed this week's forecast. Uh, if you did, please share it with someone who you think would enjoy it as well. And of course, if you want to connect with me, you can find me on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, under Neo Feminine Astrology. If you are interested in working with me one-on-one, -on -one, I do readings, coaching, counseling. You can find more info about that on my website under neofeminineastrology.com. Wishing you a wonderful week and I'll see you soon. Namaste.